Greetings hobbies, this is our Santa Vol, and in this video we're going to have a look at how to make cables that aren't round, and in this instance we're going to use that to create an ammo belt. So this is a project I've been working on, and effectively it is a turret with a very big chain gun, and it needs an ammo belt to take the ammo from the hopper to the big scary gun. And to do that we need to create something that's going to be able to bridge this path, and the easiest way to do that is effectively to create a cable or to use a curve. But this isn't as simple a matter as using a standard curve because there's a few things that create some complications here. So let's dive right into this and let's have a look at what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna start by doing this with just a cable. So this is gonna be using standard Blender with no add-ons and we will have a look at a version of this using an add-on called Caberator, which is an add-on that I think is absolutely fantastic. So I'm gonna press Shift and D and then bring that along the X axis so that I've got a copy of this so I can show you both versions. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create the shape that is gonna go between these two objects. So the profile of what we want the shape to be. So I'm gonna start by doing that by bringing in a plane. This shouldn't be a cube or anything like that. And we're gonna work on that. So I'm just gonna shift an A, bring in a mesh and a plane. And then I'm just gonna press G to get it to approximately the right position, just so it's a bit easier for me to space everything out. So I'm gonna press S, click on my middle mouse button and get that on the Y axis to about there. And I think I might want this a little bit wider as well. So let's go to about that. And to make this a little bit more interesting, I thought I'd break this up. So I'm gonna go into edge mode. If you don't have machine tools, which is what gives you that pie menu, just press tab and then two. And I'm gonna press control and R, let's do two there and then I'm going to control an R there and then I'm going to press control and B to bevel that out using my mouse wheel to scroll downward so that it's only got two parts to it. Let's go somewhere there and then I'm going to select that edge, that edge and I'm going to do the same thing again just to about there. And in fact they might need to come a little bit close together so let's S to scale and on the Y axis bring those a little bit closer together there. And then finally, I'm just gonna to go to edge mode, select those edges and just delete those edges out. So we've got a bit more of an interesting shape. Now at this point, we need to get rid of all the internal faces. We don't want those. So I'm just gonna go vertex mode, press A and then F, and that's gonna create one single face. And in actual fact, I'm gonna grab those and just press S and X to make those a little bit wider, just so it's a little bit stronger. We might need to change this around later, but we can do that fairly easily. And now that we've got an object that we're happy with, I'm just gonna press G and Y and move that off to the side. And let's start working on our curve. So I'm gonna come into my side view. I'm gonna press Shift and A, and I'm gonna bring in a Bezier curve. And that'll be down here, so let's just G and move that up. And then I'm gonna go into edit mode, I'm just gonna start moving these around. So I'm gonna press G to get that there, and then I'm gonna press R to rotate it. So it's pointing in the direction we want the curve to be, and then I'm gonna do the same over here. And you'll notice each time I'm putting them slightly inside the object that they're gonna be coming out of. And then again, I'm gonna rotate it, and then I'm gonna press S to scale that up a little bit. And then same with this one, S. Let's scale that up a bit to give a bit more of a flowing curve. Now at this point, it's all the way over there. So let's go into object mode, go to the top axis, G and Y to move it down. And I actually need to make this so it doesn't have this awkward curve. So I'm gonna go into edit mode, press A, S, Y, and then type in zero, and that's gonna flatten it out. Now I do need a bit of movement because actually these aren't aligned. And I've done that intentionally because it makes everything look a little bit more interesting. So I'm just gonna press G on that one and then Y and bring it a little bit further forward. Okay, so we're pretty good to go. We've got our cable and we need to make this object go onto our cable. And this isn't actually too bad. What we need to do first of all is we need to turn this into a curve. It doesn't work with a mesh. So that's relatively easy. Just right click, convert to, and then curve. You'll see that it goes hollow. And I always just control an A and apply the scale just to make sure everything's sorted. And we're not gonna have any problems there. Then I come back to my original curve and we're gonna come down. If you come to this menu here, which is the object data properties, we can have a look at this and there's a few things we can do. But the most important one is if you go to geometry and we've got the bevel, if we click object, it gives us the option to select an object. And I can just click that plane and there we go. Now this obviously has not worked exactly the way we intended. It's at the wrong angle. Now we can, if we want to, press R, 
Z to rotate that on the Z axis 90 and then control and A and apply the rotation and that's going to flip everything around. So we've got a relatively quick way of sorting it, but this still isn't perfect. If you notice because of the curve and the angle it's at, we've got it much higher on one side than it is on the other. And while some people wouldn't care about that, I'm a pedant and I do. I want it to look right. So what I'm going to do is click on my object. Firstly, let's just go to shade flat just so we can see what's going on a little bit more clearly. And then I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to select that point. Now, this is where people often go wrong on this and they sit there trying to rotate this around with the R button to get it to work and it won't. It's never going to work because you're not trying to rotate this using one of the handles. You're trying to twist it. And to do that, you press Control and T and it allows you to twist in whatever direction you want. So I'm going to put it to about there. That's looking better. Now you do have to eyeball this to an extent. There's no way that you're going to get it perfect because while you can see in the top left hand corner, there's a tilt to show you how much you're tilting it. That's only from the original position. So you're never going to be able to get this dead on, but you can have a pretty good go. For example, I think that's pretty good. And I think this one needs a slight control and T movement to about there. Now, if you do want this to look a bit smoother, you can also fix that. If I come back to my object data properties in the bottom right hand corner and I go to shape, at the moment you can see we've got a resolution of 12. And if I up that to let's say 36, you can see it's going to get smoother. So we've got our belt there. So pretty easy with standard Blender. It's not too problematic, but it is slightly easier if you've got, oh, let's just copy this. So shift and D and then X. But it is easier if you've got the add-on Cable Rater. I've got a few videos on Cable Rater, two main ones. If you want to have a look at those, there's a link to them coming up in the top right-hand corner. And this is one of those add-ons that if you're ever going to do things with cables, it's really worth having. It saves a lot of time. All you have to do is press Shift, Alt and C to bring up the Cable Rater menu. Click Create Cable. I want it starting there, so I click. And I want it ending there, so I click. And we get our cable which is really useful, except for we don't want a cable. We want it to have this cross section. And to do that, we've got this menu here and I just need to set a profile. So I'll just click A, click on the thing I want and it's done. Winner. And if I click off of this and click shade flat, if you want to get back into this, just shift alt and C again and edit cable. And for example here, if I want a better resolution to this, I just press F and then I can scroll and that's going to either give me less or more. So for example, I can go up to 36 that way. So we've got two options here to do exactly the same thing. And while you've got this cable, you still have exactly the same options. I can go into edit mode and I can twist this if I want to. So control and T and I can twist that round. You will note that this actually puts in three points instead of two, which does have a slightly better flow to it. You can obviously add extra points to our curve over here. And if I want to move these around, because you are guesstimating your sort of locations, I can just press G and Y and move that along a bit. Same with this one, that's G and Y. And same with that one. So it is definitely slightly easier with Cable Rater, but either way, it's perfectly doable. Now we get into a slightly more complicated situation of what if I want something going along the cable, maybe some additional bits of detail. Now for this, I'm just gonna do this quickly. So I'm just gonna create a box. So Shift A, Mesh and Cube. That's G to move this over here and I'm going to set this up and I can use my other profile just to get this in terms of what I want in relative size. So I'm just going to press S and X to get it a bit bigger that way. S and Y to get it a bit bigger that way. And this is only guesstimating, so I'm not worried too much about it being the perfect size. And then if I want to do something, I don't know, let's select the edges there, there and there and control and B to bevel them. Oops. Let's go into object mode and control and then apply the scale. Otherwise you'll notice we had a slightly odd bevel there. It wasn't perfectly at 45 degrees. Let's go back into edge mode. Let's put that in. And I don't know, what do I want with this? Let's put something through the middle as well. So I'm gonna press shift and S, bring my cursor to these edges, which is gonna put it dead center. Oh, actually let's do that on the object. So two selected, there we go. And then I'm going to shift an A and I'm going to bring in another cube. That's S to scale that down. S and shift and Z 
to scale it on everything other than the Z axis. So something like that. And then let's add a Boolean. We're gonna get a difference Boolean and we're gonna cut that out. Just need to H to hide this and we can see what we've done. So let's apply that. Right, so this is what we're gonna be putting onto our object. This is fairly easy to do if you've got cable racer. Select the cable, shift select here, and then shift alt C, and we're gonna add or edit a segment. And you can see, here's my segment. And then I just need to press D to offset it. And then I can either move my mouse or scroll it. And then I'm gonna press A to add an array. And I can press S and move my mouse to add that. And then C, and I can add some extra segments. But you'll notice what the problem is here that we're getting is that these get deformed by the curve. And this looks horrible. Now, this is something I guess you can put up with, but I generally choose not to. So this isn't the way to do this. If this was for something like a round section cable, we'd be getting a result we're perfectly happy with, but for this, no. So what I'm gonna do is click off and I'm gonna undo that. And for some reason it wouldn't let me undo, so I had to do it in the modifier stack. Either way, no problem. So what are we going to do with this? Now the first thing to notice is that this has created a parenting. Uh, I'm going to actually undo that because we don't want that to be there. We're going to actually have to use parenting to make what we're going to have to do work. And this isn't the simplest thing to do in the world. There's a bit of a trick to it. So if you're relatively new to Blender, this might be the bit where you might want to leave it, make sure you're happy with the cables, and then come back to this. So I'm gonna click there, object, parent, and clear parenting. And then for some reason it's gone back all the way over there. Don't worry, if you didn't do all of the things with the cable rater, you wouldn't have to do this at all. You'd just have it where you left it. Now on this, it did start to look a bit wide. So I'm actually gonna press S and Z to scale that down a little bit. Control and A and apply the scale. And now we're gonna start having to work a little bit harder. So what we need to do is we need to get this object onto the cable or the curve with out it deforming. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a process called instancing, which is something Blender can do and it really does make things a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this curve here. I'm gonna shift an S to bring my cursor to it just to make life faster. And then I'm gonna shift an A and I'm gonna bring in another plane. Now this plane is irrelevant in terms of shape. It's just, we need a single face. What I'm gonna do is scale that up just to make it easier to see, but that's again, just so it's easier to see where it is. So we've got this and I'm gonna rename this by pressing F2 instancing plane, just to make it easier to find. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to this, press F2 and I'm gonna name this segment again, so it's easier to find. Now at this point, we need to make multiple versions of this. Effectively, we want an array. So I'm gonna to go to add modifier array, and I don't want this in the X axis. I want this in the Z axis. But if I come and do this over here and put that as let's say one, it's not made an array. Well, it has, but the array is on top of each other. And that's because a plane is infinitely thin. If I press N and bring up the menu here, you can see on the Z axis, the dimension is zero. So we can't use relative offset. We have to use constant offset. Again, I'm gonna put it as zero on the X. And then on the Z, we can move it apart. So we have to use the constant offset. And then I can up the count to whatever I want it to be. Then I'm just gonna minimize this. We need to add a curve modifier. And I'm going to click on my curve that I want just there and I want this in the Z axis. Now, this is working because I brought my plane to the origin of the curve. You need to make sure they have the same origin. So it's really important that you do that point of bringing the cursor when you create the plane or you move the plane here later. And here I can see, well, I might need a couple of more on the array, but we'll see what happens because actually these are quite wide. So I might just up the distance between them. Finally, we need to bring this and add it to our plane. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring this to the cursor because this and the plane need to share the same origin. Origins are something that Blender uses to try and work and do its calculations. So these need to be the same place because that's where the cursor is. I can press Shift S and I'm gonna bring this to the cursor. So we've got that there. Then I'm going to select the thing that I want to be instanced, shift select the plane, and I'm going to object, parent, 
and then object. You can also just press Control and P and click object there. And that hasn't done anything until we go to our planes, come up here to the object properties, and we've got this option called instancing. If you can't see it, you just need to click that open and then we're gonna instance on faces. So it's just there. And I've realized I've done something wrong. And that's because I did not apply the scale on this plane. You can see they have, it has worked. They're just tiny. That's because this hasn't had its scale applied. You can see that here. So this is now, this object is 3.142 times smaller because we haven't got the scale applied. So I'm just gonna press Control and A, scale, and that's going to bring everything back, but it has meant the distance between them needs to get fixed. So I'm just going to come back to my modifiers and just up the distance on the Z axis. And there we go. You can see we've added these in. So that is all there is to it. And that works whether you use Cable Rater or you had a curve originally over here. Cable Rater just makes a curve, so there's no difference there. Now at this point, we need to make these actually, well, exist because at the moment, you see that everything is connected to the plane and I can't do anything with the plane. For example, I might want to hide the planes, but it hides everything. I'm just going to undo that. So we need to separate everything out. Now, this is the time to be really happy with your cable. For example, I can still press R and move my cable around. For example, you'll notice there's a little bit of overlap there and an overlap there. So for example, if I just press R and rotate that round, I can start twisting everything about until I'm happy with the shape. If I wanted to change this and make it a totally different shape, for example, like scaling that out or bringing it in, I can do. So once you've got this set up, it's really easy to play around and get yourself happy with what you've made. Again, I think I'm just gonna R that on the Z axis slightly. That looks better. And then we go to here, we have to press Control and A, which is where we normally apply the scale, but this time we need to click Make Instances Real. And as soon as you click that, each one of these becomes its own individual object. You'll notice that now, if I edit any of the points, for example, R, it's not affecting these, they're separated. They've been made separate, because you can still see the planes moving, to the planes that they were being instanced on. And then at this point, I can just press H to hide those planes and I've got my ammo belt. And then the final thing we have to do, and we do have to do this last. In fact, I'm just gonna unhide those planes so we can see this. The final thing we need to do is stop this being a curve. And we do that just by right clicking and click convert to, and we want it to be a mesh. You'll notice as soon as I do that, my planes have gone back to where they were because there is now no longer, if I go to the modifier stack, there is now no longer a curve that it is being attached to. So at this point, that will stop working, which is why we have to make these instances real before we do that. So at this point, we can hide that and we can just boolean everything together to finalize our ammo belt. So hopefully that's been useful and shows you some of the tricks to doing this successfully. Once you know what you're doing, it isn't actually that hard. It's just knowing the tricks in the first place. Specifically, I think a particular note is that you press Control and T to twist or tilt the cable, and then using this instancing to add non-deformed objects onto our ammo belt. As always, if you found this video useful, please do give it a like. It means that more people get to see it because of the wonderful YouTube algorithms. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel for more great content and tricks to help you with your 3D modeling. Have a great day, guys.